This episode of the podcast is supported by Audible. You can download and listen to the world's best storytelling. I use it all the time to and from work. You can listen to audiobooks, original series and more on their free app. To get your free 30-day subscription, which includes a free book, click on the link in our show notes and enjoy. Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. Today I had an awesome guy come in, Matthew Westaway, who I've known for a long time. And he's the co-founder of a great tech startup based in South Africa called Voice.ai, who I will let describe exactly what it does, but super, super cool. And we hear about him and his co-founder's journey, starting a tech firm in South Africa, the challenges, uh, all the difficulties they faced in growing the business, finding funding, expanding to Europe, all of, all of that cool stuff. and what what are in store for them. So really, really cool. I hope you enjoy it. Hey, it's Lewis. Welcome to the podcast. Enjoy our conversations anytime, anywhere. Cool. We're live. Thanks for coming in, Matt. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. No pleasure. It'd be like we tried to arrange it about five million times, then I had no to cancel, news. and then you went home to Africa, and then finally back. Yeah, thanks, Lewis. So we've been doing a lot of traveling and seeing your podcast, seeing how sort of viral it's gotten, knew that we had to try to get on it. Thanks, thanks. No, good. How come you're back in uh, London? We spent the week at a conference in Dublin called SaaS Talk. It's the leading conference for SaaS companies, so software as a service companies, once a year in Dublin, and then just decided to come over to London to do a few meetings because it's it's so close to, to Dublin. Yeah, 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 nice. Well, how'd you, how'd you find Dublin? I loved it. Very nice. Didn't get that much chance to explore because we were just in the conference, but yeah, yeah, yeah. the people are very friendly, like yeah, very warm then. and they have a lovely accent. Yeah, I might need a visa to go there once Brexit happens, I think. That's one thing about being South African. We, we don't need visas for, oh, really? for Dublin, for Ireland, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> I'll need it wherever I go now, <laughs> yeah. I think. Uh, so what is Voight.ai? So, pronounce it voice. Vo- for, yeah. Uh, we spell it V-O-I-C for voice of your customer. We're a B2B SaaS platform in the cloud web-based platform to help companies analyze their call center conversations. Nice. So we specifically focus on insurance companies because believe it or not, when, when you hear them say this call's recorded, they are generally, genuinely people listening to those calls. So we have a platform where the calls come in, we flag the ones that they should look at so they don't have to look at all the calls. Oh, I see. Okay, so, so you've got all of this data of the calls and then your software analyzes them, flags up the ones that need to be listened to by a human. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. How'd you come up with that? So my co-founder Latabo and I, we had a design agency before yeah. and we were doing a lot of user research. So interviews with people and that's where we uncovered the challenge of analyzing audio conversations. Nice. We looked for solution, couldn't find anything. And then we engineers, so we built something you know realize hey this can be scalable like we always wanted to build a scalable business yeah and we also always wanted to have an impact on uh, customer experience customer service helping companies understand people and that's why we would have the agency to talk to people so you started the agency yeah had the agency was that straight after university straight after university and you guys met at uni yeah cool yeah. and then had this idea created this platform to analyze conversations realized hey this is our chance at having a, a huge impact scalable business and then we were running pilots and we came across the call center industry we realized that you know for every 20 agents you've got one person listening to calls um so like the managers like listening and there's actually a dedicated role called a quality assurance analyst and then we discovered that in insurance on the sales side when they sell policies over the phone they listen to every single call once once the sale's been done to make sure that it was compliant right right and you know if they find an error in one in ten calls there's nine out of ten calls that are listened to for no reason yeah cool so you've yeah. automated that basically basically yeah. nice nice yeah. How, how's it been so you've done it two three years or what's just been? just going on two years yeah. um we started last year feb last year feb up until december was very exploratory so we were running various pilots with companies um and then at about march this year we sort of struck the vein with insurance companies great um you know now we, we're growing at two two three companies a week nice um thousands and thousands of hours of of audio being pumped through our platform amazing it takes a long time to find the vein yeah yeah so mm. you try different industries mm. and different you, yeah dozens a dozen odd uh you know use cases and then once you once you strike the vein then it pulls and then and then it's like you have to double down you have nice. to focus yeah and you're from south africa from south africa what's it like starting a tech firm being young in south africa i think i couldn't think of a better place so we fortunate in that you know we have a developing country but we have a developed infrastructure so we have all the capabilities you need to build a software business obviously the affordability of of talents of labor you yeah know, yeah good developers of five years experience are you know 
what 30,000 pounds a year which is probably like four times cheaper than they are in, in the UK yeah yeah. Uh, and then you also have the infrastructure you have the good talent and then just the amazing quality of life you know driving around to work sunny weather nice. beautiful mountain but that's yeah. this is in Cape Town that's in Cape Town yeah, yeah. what about Joburg Joburg is where the where the, Most the, the business is yeah um, so it's it's we go there once a week to meet to meet customers yeah oh so the customer the customers are there yeah and then the nice work life balance is in Cape Town yeah <laughs> so we're busy now we're trying to like we're serving customers in different parts of of the world and we've decided to build our sort of an inside sales approach so we can so inside being you have an inside your own sales team in, yeah and in, inside so it's all, yeah. all over the internet oh okay right yeah so we don't have to have a field presence in the markets oh perfect so you, what you do like a video call and yeah yeah that's the the way to stay in sunny south africa nice and serve customers anywhere and do what you, you want to keep the business base as Africa? That's a good question. So, you know, we want to sell the business in seven to ten years time, and you have to have the business in the market where your acquirers are going to be. Yes, yeah. And that means that we'd have to move our business into into Europe. I think you come to yeah. Yeah. Um, from a from the perspective of the business being registered and the IP being housed in in the market where you want to be acquired. Yeah, yeah. So that's something we're going through at the moment. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Do you see yourself moving from Cape Town and somewhere in Europe? Yeah. So Fine. we've settled on Amsterdam. Oh, okay. How um, come? So the Netherlands is very friendly towards tech companies. Um, well, a lot of the European companies are a lot of European countries. We have a particular advantage in one of our angel investors is a Dutch ambassador. Oh, perfect. So her name is Bonnie Holbach. She's amazing she's been plugging us into the various networks in, in Amsterdam in The Hague The Hague is an ama- amazing province as well for tech companies right. and that's actually where we've put our first foot down in The Brilliant. Hague yeah. and how did you get involved with her? she was the consulate general in, in Cape Town uh, for the Netherlands Brilliant. we would meet her um, just you know f- to get some advice so on, like a mentor uh, yeah. type Yeah. and then we had a lot of offers from investors and she actually said to us guys I think it's too early for you to be taking on these kind of investors I'll, I'll put some money in nice so she was the first person to write a check in in Feb last year. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. So we'll just kind of get proof of concept, make yeah. sure it works yeah. and just study. Yeah. Was there like, um, were you quite keen just to go big early? Early on, um, the the goal is to, to find product market fit. So that's that means you, you actually have to talk to customers a lot. So it's more about yeah. uh, talking to customers, finding out what they need, what their behaviors are. And then after you, you find product market fit, then you can throw fuel in the flames. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're at that point now where it's about, about growth. But last year was very exploratory. Like making mistakes, learning, and, yeah. and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. What's been the biggest challenge? Is it that like first year of just trying to get it to work? The challenges in the in the beginning. Um, it's always product market fit. You know, that's very hard. It's like we've struck a vein now with insurance, but we know we have another up to a year to really have a proper understanding of, of the market. Um, so that's always challenging because without that, you can't just throw f- fuel on the flames. You, yeah, yeah, you need yeah. to be sure. Um, otherwise, you'll crash and burn. The challenge now is finding the right people. So, you know, you're to being hire. in recruitment, yeah, uh, yeah. getting quality hires. Is, is a challenge. Yeah. What's been the biggest? So I'm the, the CEO, so I focus on uh, HR team takes up about 60% of my time. Right. <laughs> what I've noticed recently, I've missed out on a few great hires just based on timing. Like I've just contacted people and they've just said, oh, two weeks ago, I, need f- I, I chose this job. Yeah. So it's it's timing is just goes down to chance. Like I've been unlucky with timing. We've learned that you always need people that are smarter than you and better than you. And in, in a startup, it's hard to get experienced people because experienced people are going to work. Uh, they, they've got 12 years experience and they're looking for really leadership roles. You find they want to work in maybe a bigger firm. Yeah, where they can yeah. manage a team of people. Well, might, yeah, yeah. So we need people that are actually not in leadership position, but are able to to get their hands dirty and actually do, do tasks and things. Yeah, 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 yeah. So finding smart people there yeah. uh, is a It's tough. It's really tough. Yeah. It's also defining like the roles you need to do and then really thinking about the spec and the talent you need. The other thing is with startups, you tend to go for younger people. The problem with they with sometimes with the younger like grads and stuff is in a startup environment, you don't always get loads and loads of training. And, yeah. you know, being the CEO and whatever, you got, you're busy doing so many different tasks. It's finding someone that's happy with um, ambiguity, you know, not necessarily knowing exactly what they're going to do and someone just able to kind of get on with it and be comfortable doing that. Exactly. We've made mistakes before where we would bring on guys to help us with sales, for example. And Latabo and I, founders, we do all the sales at the moment and we'd have someone who just wants to pick up a product and sell it. Every week we're coming to them and saying, okay, no, this this has changed, this has changed. And we realized that it's actually unfair on them because <laughs> yeah, yeah, they yeah, just yeah. want to sell. And yeah, we actually yeah. still are finding things. So until we've gotten that process, uh, that repeatable sales process, 
process yeah, defined. Yeah. We can't actually give it to anyone. No, true. And it's always evolving. Yeah. I mean, you've evolved a yeah. lot over the yeah. last couple of years yeah. and it's going to continue yeah. to do that. I know this is a bit unfair question because you're sitting in the audience, but what's it like working with a co-founder? Uh, it's, it's excellent. I couldn't imagine the ability to do it without a, a co-founder, just right. in general, because you have days when it's extremely tough on on you say one of you and the other one is always there to carry the slack yeah, to yeah, pick it yeah. up if you have not having the best day um, if you alone and you're doing it yourself and you have a bad day there's no one else who's having a good day yeah yeah, so, yeah that's true yeah. that's true and you have complementary skill sets yes how do you split the the different tasks Tabo is very very much a problem solver so she likes to get down with the engineering and the product and, and, and solve problems and build the good engineering team yeah. around problem solving and, and development on my side I I don't know why I said engineering but I have quite a strong passion for business yeah so you know sales fundraising administration the, the business side of things I actually enjoy all the that. sexy stuff right? yeah <laughs> not really <laughs> <laughs> Fine. So it's worked quite nicely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's been it's been fortuitous. We actually we're at the you know stages where the team will know like if if, the, if there's a question, this is Latawa. She's she handles all the product engineering stuff. If it's something to do with their pay slip, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, right, nice. I speak to a lot of founders, entrepreneurs, and, and the mi- the mindset uh, is is a real a real big thing. So you mentioned you know when you're on down, you have a bad day. How have you gone about adjusting to a lifestyle where it's down to you? You got to get out there and make the sales, otherwise the money's not coming in. Or you got to plan your day effectively. Have you have you have you spent some time thinking about in terms of like the mental mental health? It's a, it's yeah, a popular yeah. topic at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Some people say it's like um, it's, it's it's a curse being a founder because you go into this life that you live that's actually the work life balance is not there. Um, so you're working harder, longer, for harder, less money. <laughs> longer. You're always working. You're always thinking about it. Yeah. I mean, I haven't worked out the work life balance at the moment, to be honest. And and I don't think anyone in our, our team has. Even though the the team members, we try and make sure that they you know get get home um, around Before seven like, eight, and okay. and Latab and I will stay on to midnight on a Hard few call. nights a week. And getting that right, I don't know. To be honest, I don't think we we're ever going to get it right. But you have to grind. I mean, like yeah. if you look at the most successful yeah. people, they're working like super super hard yeah a standard aren't they i mean you hear most successful businessmen only later on in their life they say oh no work-life balance you know don't work too hard self-development but they all worked extremely hard to get there but also there we still look at warren buffett still working yeah he's like 90 odd now um best sauce i yeah. mean i, I did yeah. these guys because yeah. also you're like if work is your life and you're used to working super hard it's very difficult just to stop and why should you as well mm. you know like in the in the uk the retirement age has been scrapped now oh really yeah you know roughly if you're if you're born in let's say the uk now you probably live to around about 100 so they say you'll probably be working your whole life so it used to be uh, education work retirement like three stages to life now most people end up having three careers 20 years you get a little bit bored so yeah. the, the kind of standard like three stages i think is gone now and you're going to just resign yourself to the fact that you're going to be working yeah super hard i think that the nice thing then about having your your own business is you don't have a, a date when people are expecting you to move on yeah. we, we can do this for the rest of our lives yeah like, yeah yeah that's and you enjoy are you enjoying doing your own thing love it yeah. so one of the things of why i wanted to be an entrepreneur is i just didn't want to report to anyone i mean that's i know that's like really honest but i just didn't feel like being told what to do you just wanted to like crack on do yeah, your own thing yeah. have you ever worked for anyone else never never so straight worked out of uni yeah. you guys met and then six six years out of uni now going on six years and nice. all, you learn a lot it's a really steep learning curve yeah at least i know now what i don't know yeah yeah which yeah. is good yeah like the mentor side have you have you got other mentors now have you found that useful or yeah 100 percent. mentorship is definitely the one factor that has the greatest impact on your chances of success yeah. like the more mentorship you get the higher odds of success Guaranteed. Second time, third time founders have higher success rates because they don't make the same mistakes. And if someone's made those mistakes and they tell you about them, you will have yeah, great yeah. odds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as long as also you have the mindset of, you know, if you fail, you learn from it. Yeah. And it's it's fine to fail, you know. I mean, the problem in fact in the UK is people are a little bit scared to fail, and so then it stops a lot of people trying stuff. Like in the US, for example, um, they just they just go for it. What's the worst that can happen? You get another job. Yeah. you learn you move on so it's it's a really it's a good mindset to have that's an interesting point uh yesterday you know took a big shot uh went for something um out of our reach uh we were hesitant to do it because we were like oh, we're on such a winning streak let's just carry this on but we went for it and we failed and um you know, we all learn it just drives it's like, you just set that failure as the next target yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like, and you carry on yeah because the next thing after failure is success yeah 
and you just keep on keep on going keep on going yeah you know they always say like under promise and over deliver but then a lot of yeah. the time that stops you from actually striving for something that maybe is a little bit big but you probably could deliver it yeah and that that under promise over deliver <laughs> uh, we're actually very bad at that <laughs> over promise and worry about delivering yeah. later it's fine <laughs> get the work in <laughs> <Everything>. <laughs> How's like? How's it been raising funding? So I said sixty percent of my time is team and, and hiring. Uh, the other twenty five, or well, even up to to forty percent, is fundraising. So right, it's the one positive about fundraising is speaking to to VCs and investors is is like free management consulting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because their panel beat your business and they ask you questions that you've never thought of. I mean, the nice thing is we, we're going through a fundraising process at the moment. The amount of advice and realizations we've come to because of the VCs has, yeah, been, yeah. has been priceless. So yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. So now, so, now the, so the fundraising now is a bigger part of your job than it was to start with or you've always kept it as? Generally, what, what happens is you, you, you fundraise, it takes you up to six months. That lasts you uh, 18 months of, of right. runway and then 12 months in, you start the other six months to, to raise for the next 18 months. Wow. So every year you fundraise, you start a new fundraising process. Crazy. Until you start profiting and then... The thing about the venture space is that we're at the point now where we've gone down the VC route. Yeah. And going down the VC route means you, you're down that route for life now. So you have to continuously put capital to work and to grow your business. You, you can't one day say, actually, I'm happy with the current stage we're at. I don't want to grow anymore. You Absolutely. grow until you hit the sky. Like you, you, you don't stop. So you just keep going until you sell. You keep going until you sell. You have to give your, you know, you, you've got investors who 100x their money back right yeah, they want you to be the one company out of the dozen or two that they've invested in yeah it's going to return for all of them 3x so yeah yeah so you just got to keep like interesting interesting so it's an interesting mindset to get into you've got to be quite comfortable not necessarily making profit or making money but keep on the growth keep on hiring keep yeah. developing the product and there's one you know good rule of thumb let's say you raise a million dollars you must get your annual revenue to a million dollars right. that's like the rule of thumb you raise 10 million you must get your annual revenue to 10 million if you raise 10 million and your annual revenue doesn't get to gets to one million you're in problems then you're gonna uh, crash and burn so you have to put the capital to work yeah there's yeah. no point in raising money and then you actually waste it you don't turn it into revenue crazy yeah i mean so once you get this money in have you guys sought advice on where to invest it how to spend it or you've just trial trial and error and the, actually the the statistic i think is around about 70 percent of investment goes to hiring right okay so it's all into wow. people um it's people and then you know growth if you're doing paid acquisition yeah. it'll go towards that but it's people so it's we we're gonna we're, we're currently a team of five and uh, we we're gonna double our size yeah yeah, um, yeah. and, and it's, it's it's people yeah nice and you're gonna hire them firstly in south africa and then as you transition to the netherlands so we will for as as much as possible keep the team and the workforce down in south africa yeah yeah um it's just very capital efficient yeah, yeah. But when when we start having presence in different markets, um, like for example, when we go to the US, we have to you know hire a VP of sales in the US. Yeah, you have to bring out a sales function there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But engineering, yeah. product design, supports can be back in South Africa. Yeah, yeah. Have you found like interesting cultural differences between kind of doing business in South Africa and compared to Europe? Um, yeah, so South Africans. I mean, obviously, I'm biased. I like love South Africans. I'm very proud of being a South African. Absolutely. <laughs> um, Europe is there's multiple countries so there's multiple cultures and stuff and often it helps to have someone in that market who can you know be in a partner or an advisor who, yeah, who, yeah, can, who yeah. can help you nice um, and then in terms of like plans for the future so you touched on it a little bit so expand into new markets develop the product is there anything else on the uh, on the horizon in terms of different products or are you going to focus on your your core yeah so we are going to focus double down on carrying double down on insurance yeah so working with about 25 companies now, um, doing about 100,000 hours a quarter. Wow. We want to get that uh, to, to a million hours a year. So Sounds like a lot. Yeah. The target for end of next year is 100, 100 insurance companies. 100 insurance companies. Yeah. We've got, we know wow. that in the UK, we've got about 1,100. In South Africa, 300. The States, 6,000. And these are um, general insurance companies? Uh, these are, it's a combined mix. Yeah, um, yeah. Our sweet spot is with life insurance. Oh, with life insurance? Yeah. Okay, fine. So that's our sweet spot. Nice, awesome. Um, great to have you on. Thanks for coming in. How do people get in touch with you? Thanks, Lewis. It's been a pleasure being on your show. Pleasure, um, pleasure. To get in touch, you can email me on matthew at voice.ai. So that's 
m-a-t-t-h-e-w at v-o-y-c dot a-i or you can go to our website voice dot a-i and contact us there perfect um, available on twitter uh, instagram instagram linkedin, LinkedIn facebook or, snapchat or snap, tiktok also not snapchat, maybe tiktok <laughs> have you started with tiktok not yet but i've heard it's it's um, supposed viral, to be yeah. yeah it's maybe the next massive thing i'm going to start to but um you need to invest a lot of time in these platforms yeah i know <laughs> take and take over your life yeah. yeah yeah well we'll stick all of that in the show notes okay. as well thank you very much for coming in thanks thanks cool. Lewis. pleasure hey folks thanks for listening don't forget to subscribe in all the usual places 